Hi, in uh, this uh, tutorial I will give an overview of uh, DAC and I.O. modules in uh, LabVIEW. So here is we see the contents of this uh, tutorial. First, an introduction to DAC and I.O. modules. Uh, getting started with the USB 6000X series of DAC devices from uh, NI. Then I will provide some uh, practical lab examples. Uh, typically all these uh, I.O. modules has four different types of signals. You have analog out analog in, digital I.O. and then you have digital out and digital in. So I will provide some basic examples in each of those uh, categories. So uh, let's start with a short introduction to DAC and uh, I.O. modules. Here you see different NI uh, DAC hardware. Um, these are just a few examples. I guess NI or no, uh, Emerson uh, has hundreds, maybe thousands of different um, Dock and hardware devices. This is just a few examples that I have here in uh, uh, the university. In this tutorial, we will use uh, the USB 6000 and X series, which consists of different low cost DAC series. But the functionality of those uh, DAC devices and other DAC devices from uh, and I has the same uh, functionality and the same features and they all are using this NI uh, DAC MX hardware driver. So a uh, DAC uh, device or a DAC system uh, consists of four different parts. We have the physical input out signals, sensors, etc. Uh, and here you could have a temperature sensor or similar. Then you have the DAC uh, device or the hardware, the I.O. module. And in our case, I will uh, use a USB uh, 6000X or a 6008 in my case. Um, it's a low cost DAC device in the USB 6000X uh, series. Uh, the third part of our DAC system is the driver uh, software. And in this case, um, most of um, the DAC devices from NI um, are using this DAC MX software. So uh, the final part is your application uh, and in our case you will make the applications using the LabVIEW programming environment. So typically, uh, at least in this case, you need to have the LabVIEW programming environment. This typically costs money and you need a DAC device. This is also cost so <coughs> some money and you need some sensors etc. And uh, in other addition you need to use this uh, DAC MX software. This is a free download. Uh, which you can download and install uh, from internet. Here is a, a visual uh, a representation of these four parts. So here you have the input out of signals. Uh, for instance, uh, signals, it could be different types of digital signals, analog signals, etc. And these are connected to the I.O. module, uh, the DAC acquisition hardware, which has analog um, I.O. pins and digital I.O. pins. So typically all the DAC devices or I.O. modules has analog input, analog output, digital input and digital output, which you can connect to different types of input output signals. Then you need a PC or a computer with the software and then you need um, typically, uh, in our case, the LabVIEW uh, programming environment and then uh, you need the hardware driver, in our case this DAC MX uh, software driver and then you need to start creating the application that are communicating with the DAC device and, and uh, getting signals or values from the sensors. So here you see the DAC MX driver which you can just uh, download from internet. So just google it or go to this link and then you can don't know this NI DAC MX driver. Uh, as part of this MX, uh, DAC MX driver, uh, there are installed a package called Measurement and Automation Explorer. This is a software tool that you use to configure, set up and test your hardware de devices. So here on the left side you see uh, different hardware devices I have installed on my computer and then you can uh, uh, run a self-test, you can open the test panels in order to test and make sure that the uh, devices are working as expected. 
Here you see the docmx palette that are installed. Um, this is the functions that you need to use in the lab programming environment. So on your block diagram, uh, when you right click um, to get the functions palette, then you select the docmx uh, sub palette, which consists of these uh, functions that you can use in order to communicate and uh, write or read uh, data from your uh, DAC devices. Next, a uh, short overview of the USB uh, 6000X uh, DAC series from NI. So here you see some of the uh, DAC devices in this uh, low-cost USB 6000X uh, DAC series. You have USB uh, 6000, USB 6001, 6002, 6003, etc. In my tutorial, I will use an older uh, DAC device called USB 6008. But this has been replaced with uh, these uh, newer versions. But the functionality in uh, these different DAC devices is the same, and they are all using this NI uh, DAC MX uh, driver. So, um, as mentioned, I will use this USB 6008 DAC device in the examples, but you can use any kind of DAC devices in this. Uh, DAC series or other DAC devices or I.O. modules from NI because they are all working more or less in the same manner. They have all uh, input output channels, they have in, uh, analog inputs, they have analog outputs, digital inputs and digital outputs. So here you see an image where you have the overview of the different pins or connectors on the DAC device. So we have typically a connector on each side of the DAC device and on one side you have analog pins, analog inputs. So here you have analog input pins and here you have analog output pins. And on the other side you have digital input and output pins. Typically you can choose if these uh, digital pins should be an input or an output. So next let's uh, start with some practical lab examples. So then I will go through some examples in different categories. I will start with analog out, meaning I will uh, write data. And then I will uh, provide some uh, analog input examples, meaning reading data. Then I will provide some digital uh, examples, the first digital out and then digital in. So uh, let's start with the analog out or write. Here on the um, dock device, in this case I use B6000 X series, um, we have um, two analog output channels. So here in the bottom on the left side of this uh, duct device, we have here analog output zero and here analog output uh, one. While here we have analog inputs and here we have digital inputs and outputs. So these are the two analog channels that we can use for output or writing. Here you see a typical uh, test uh, setup for the analog output uh, channels. So basically I have connected uh, my DAC device to my computer and on the output, analog output uh, pin zero, here in this case ground and analog output zero, I have connected those to a multimeter and then when I write a specific voltage value in my lab program, I should be able to see the same voltage value here in the multimeter. Here you see a basic examples, example in LabVIEW where I have used this uh, DAC assistant. So basically I have just created an analog uh, numeric uh, control where I can specify the analog uh, output voltage value uh, here. And then I just wire it directly to this uh, DAC assistant. And when I set up the DAC assistant, I need to set up the following. I need to select generate signals, voltage, and then specify the correct analog output channel. And then basically uh, this application are up and running and you can just click the run button, specify a voltage value, and then you should be able to see that specific voltage value on the multimeter. Instead of using the DAC assistant, you can also use the so-called low-level uh, DAC MXVIs in uh, LabVIEW. So here you see the same uh, application, but I have used the low-level DAC VIs instead. So then you st uh, start with the, the function DAC MX create task, then DAC MX create virtual channel, where you specify uh, the minimum uh, voltage value and the maximum voltage value, specify the physical channel in this case, 
analog output channel number zero. Then you start the task and then inside the while loop, then you use doc MX write and where you write the specified uh, voltage value you put here on your front panel. And then when you click on the stop button, uh, the while loop stops and then you use this stop task, clear task and then finally you can show uh, an error message to the user if there are some errors in your application. Next we have the analog input uh, channels or reading values. So here on the duck device on the left side we have uh, eight uh, so-called reference single-ended analog input channels or we have four analog input differential analog input channels. So then you uh, need to uh, specify in your wiring if you want to use reference single-ended or differential. Uh, for the differential uh, channels, each of the channels have their own uh, ground or minus. So differential analog um, channels has minus and plus that you need to wire. While for the reference single-ended, they have common ground that you use for all uh, the channels. So that's why you have twice as many reference single-ended channels compared to differential uh, channels. So here you see uh, the difference in wiring uh, when it comes to differential or reference single-ended. So here on the left side I have using analog input channel uh, number zero for a differential uh, wiring. So then I put the positive wire here on this one and the negative wire here on this input. While in uh, reference single-ended mode, I use this common ground pin as a reference. So this is differential, this is reference single-ended wiring. So here you see a basic uh, test setup for testing the analog input channels. So I basically have a, a battery package here, which I uh, wire directly to the analog input channel. So in this case I have used uh, differential uh, wiring. So I have um, the positive, the red one connected to this one and the black or white one, the negative pole on the battery is connected to this input uh, connector on, on the duct device. And here you see a basic uh, lab application where I have used the duct assistant and then the output of the DAC assistant, the data, I just wire it directly to a numeric indicator and then I can see the voltage level, in this case on the battery, that is connected to the input channel. So that's a basic um, lab application in order to test the analog input channel on your DAC device. And then you need to specify these settings in the DAC assistant, you need to select analog input, voltage, and then you will get a list of the available channels. So then in my case I've just selected analog input zero and then click uh, next here. I will be able to specify some settings. You can set the minimum and maximum voltage and here you have set if it should be differential or reference single-ended and here you set typically one sample on demand. And say here you see an example where I have used the so-called low-level uh, DOC MX VIs instead of the DAC assistant. It's very similar to the analog output example. So the create task, create virtual channel, start task, and stop, clear, etc. is the same. But here you specify on this create virtual channel, here you specify analog input voltage instead. And then inside the while loop you use docmx read instead of docmx write. So these are the low level uh, docmx functions. And this uh, example are then reading the voltage value here that you have wired on the analog input channel. Next we have the digital output channels or basically we have a lots of digital IO channels and those can be either set to digital out or digital in. Here you see a basic uh, test setup for testing the analog, uh, sorry, the digital output channel. So then basically you use a multimeter and then you connect one of the digital uh, channels, in this case uh, P0.0, which is 
P is a port, so this is port 0 and this is the line numbers. So then you just wire this one directly to the multimeter and then you use the ground here and wire it also to the multimeter. And then you can specify either true or false in your library program and then you should see here on the multimeter if you specify false you should see zero voltage if you specify true then you see should see five voltage here on your multimeter so here you see a basic or simple uh, digital output example in uh, labview so here on the front panel i have just specified a switch and here you can set either true or false and i have a stop button and here i have a while loop and then inside the while loop I just connect this switch directly to the DAC assistant. Um, since this is just a scalar value and the input to the DAC assistant in this case needs to be an array, I just use the, one of the array functions that is called build array in order to, to make sure that the data type here is uh, correct. In order to use the DAC assistant here, I need to specify these settings. So you select digital output, line output, and then you select the proper port and line. In this, in my case, I have used port zero, line zero, which is uh, this one. So that's uh, basically what you need to do in order to set either true or false on one of the digital output channels. Finally, let's take a look at the digital input. And as mentioned earlier, we have these common digital uh, pins that you can set to either be input or output. And here you see a typical uh, test setup for testing these, this uh, digital in in your lab application. So then basically I wire uh, and specify that this, this one should be digital output and then I wire it directly to the next um, channel which is specified to be a digital input uh, like this so here you see the physical wiring i just wire from this channel to directly to the next channel and then uh, in this case you need to specify uh, to be a digital input then you select line input and then in this case this port zero uh, line one uh, this one should be a digital input and this one should be a digital output so in this basic example, I have used both digital uh, output and digital input. And here you see the front panel in this basic example. Here I have a switch, which I can set to true or false. And then here I have a indicator. So I specify on um, this channel to be true or false, high or low. Here, I write it to the DAC assistant and here I read uh, this channel uh, here and then I present it here so when this I set this to, to false this should be false and when I set this to true this should be true so this is a basic test wiring in order to test the digital output channel uh, on your duct device in LabVIEW so in the next uh, videos in this uh, duct and IO modules in LabVIEW tutorial I will go through these four categories, analog output, analog input, digital output and digital input in detail and I will create the examples I, I was showing now and some more examples. I will show step by step how we create these examples in LabVIEW. So that's all for now, so thank you and goodbye.